Hi, and welcome back. I'm coming today just to do an update. This is my second floss tube video, and I've been working on some of those old cross stitches, um, a couple of them from 1988, and another one from the 90s. At least I worked on it in the 90s. And I've been trying to finish these three before I start anything new. But that doesn't mean that I haven't been looking and I haven't been buying because that's the nature of the beast. So uh, without any further ado, I'm going to do a whip update. So I showed in my first uh, floss tube video some FFOs of the first two gardens in this series from this is Cross Stitch and Country Crafts, I believe, from July, August of 1988. And this is the Country Garden. And I will try to insert a picture of where I was with this piece um, in my video last week. And this is where I am now. I've done more of the background and I've got the um, bird bath filled in for the most part. And one thing I've noticed working on this uh, chart is that there are many fractional stitches. Like this background that I'm working on here with a very light green is half stitches that are interspersed with full stitches and then there are also quarter stitches and even some three-quarter stitches so that's probably one of the reasons this piece was left for a little while but i'm enjoying working on it and it's moving along and hopefully i will have that done soon and the other piece that I was working on is from a Hirschner's um, magazine from October, November of 1988, and that was volume one, number three. And it was the alphabet, and let's see if I can, yes, it's this alphabet here that they have framed pretty simply. And I will try to insert a picture of where this was at the time of my last video. I didn't have the whole of the outside, let me put it against here so I can hold it up, of the outside frame complete. I do now have all of that blue done and I apologize for kind of the grimy nature of it but it's been put away for a very long time and I did take the tape off, which left some residue, so I can't wait to wash this and clean it up. But now all I have left to do is work this vine around the border, which is green. But I'm thinking that I may swap this color out because it's just not dark enough. I probably will have to go back around it with the brown back stitching, like I did with the alphabet, the flowers in the alphabet. But I'm really not liking it very much, and its color is 772, which I have on a cardboard teddy bear bobbin that I made many years ago. Uh, and if you can hear my troops in the background. Our big dog just came downstairs to see what was going on. And the last whip in the process is the one I started in October that my oldest daughter is also working on and then we will swap when we finish them and that's called Somebody, Somebody to Love and it's from the 2015 Christmas uh, cross stitch favorites and let me see if I can find the picture of it yes there's what she will look like when she's done. And I will try to insert a picture here from last the last video. I'm 
trying to get used to this. And then this is where she is now. So I'm moving along with her and I just started working on this darker turquoise that's going to be coming up the back of her coat and into her ear and her winter cap. I still have to fill in the um, extra white um, stuff around her ruff around the bottom of her coat. And that's all of my whips that I've worked on. There's still other ones that I haven't been able to find the charts for that I may just let die a natural death. Um, I did find um, when I was going through some of my old stuff, I have this package of DMC flower floss, and I don't remember how I came to have this, but it's all 27 colors that they had at the time, and I think it was for a very discounted price, probably $5 or so, and they sent a chart, actually two charts in here, and I believe all 27 of the flower floss colors that they had at the time and I've never used it. I got it and I just kind of wasn't sure because it's very hmm looking for something to hold this up against excuse me it's very it's only single ply and it's very fine and yeah so I have 27 of these and like I said, it's DMC, and it's their flower thread. So that was an interesting thing to come across. And then I also have been going through some of my old magazines, because I have a lot of uh, cross-stitch and country crafts. I know that I gave away a lot of magazines uh, a long time ago because I used to have boxes of cross stitch magazines so I have been going through some of those and I've picked out a lot of um, patterns that I want to do when I get a couple of these done one thing I did bring down was the one two three stitch order that I forgot to show in my last video and these are the specialty colors that I didn't have that I need for somebody to love. And this is 4100, which is a DMC pearl cotton in pinks and yellows. And then I also need this extra white floss, which is S5200. Most of the stores have a lot of B5200s, but none of them had S5200, so I bought two of those. And then I also needed this um, DMC that's E3747, which is very sparkly and light blue and goes in the somebody's coat. And then I also picked up the 28 count ice blue linen from 123 stitch and I can't wait to find something to put that on and I um, oh, it doesn't look like I brought that down here so I will okay I'm back I had to run upstairs and get this book um, because I ordered on Amazon Joan Elliott's Bewitching Cross Stitch book and I, because I really love these designs. I love dragons and I love that magical dragon. In my one, in my, in a video I did where I did some hand dyeing, tie dyeing of uh, 14 count Ada, I did a multicolored green type fabric, which is this one. And this is a 14 count Ada, and it's 11 by 16 and 3 quarters inches. And I think this would be perfect for, I don't know, 
this imagine because the imagine is in a dark purple and then there's the unicorn head so I'm thinking I may do this one on this piece of fabric that I did so I've found something already to do to use my fabric for so along that same line, I also went to Heaven and Earth Designs because I joined the new Heaven and Earth Designs Facebook group and I've been looking. I have a huge wish list, but to start with, I got, I ordered and downloaded the mini afternoon tea. It's a little dragon with a teacup. tea bag and there are two other dragons that look like they're part of this one's high tea and the other one's sweet treats I think that I'm thinking I would like to also do and make a set of those I seem to like series pictures and also hunting through my stash this is kind of old stuff now I found a leisure arts it looks like a bookmark but what this actually is, and I don't know if they still give these out or not, it's uh, a ruler, and like this, t this shows, so you can hold it up to your thread, and it's 14 count, and this one's 18 count, and then on this side it has 25 count, and then this is 32 count. So I tried using this because I found some English linen, it's a European linen in a bamboo color that I got from fabric.com and I have a pile of it <laughs> so I thought gee it, it's got slubs so it's not great but I thought you know I could might be able to use this for something as far as cross stitch goes and I tried using this and this one goes from 14 to 18 to 25 to 32 and I think this might be 28 count but I'm not sure. I have to sit down and hand count it. So that's something I'll be doing sometime. I don't know if it'll be right away. And then I don't know if everybody, I know everybody goes to Michael's and this was in the dollar fifty bin probably last year sometime. And it was just a zippered padded pouch didn't have anything inside it so I took it's got the bird cage with a heart on the front I took I just wrote on it with like Sharpie Kelly's needle book and I turned it into a needle book obviously but I inserted a little red felt and put some elastic which it doesn't need right now because and I just put some scissors and some extra unopened needles and a couple of thimbles in there and then I added to the back area, I just put in a bunch of felt that I put some of my needles in, and some because I have piles of needles. And then I took a small sized plastic zipper bag and I sewed that into, like I sewed these pages together with the bag and my sewing machine. And then I hand stitched them into the spine of the padding can't really see it because I did it with like a, a ladder stitch so it's inside you can't see any of the stitching anywhere else on the pouch but I thought that would come in handy because I do have so many needles and this kind of puts quite a few of them plus my little scissors in one spot so that is coming in very handy and then on Amazon, I placed an order for one of the Q-Snap floor frames because I'm used to using a floor frame. And I used to have, I do have a wooden scroll stretcher bar frame that had a floor stand, but I might have given the floor stand away a few years ago. So I bought the Q-Snap one, and I know that I could probably have made it myself, but I didn't want to mess with having to cut the PVC and then make the slits to make the clamp parts. I'm just lazy. 
So I ordered the floor frame and that should be here today or tomorrow. But at the same time, I ordered a 17 by 17 inch Q-snap frame. I ordered the 14 inch extension, which will change the 11 by 11 into a 14 inch. And I imagine it might work with some of the other ones. And then I also bought the Q-tilt. It's just two pieces that you replace the back legs on the uh, floor frame with that tilts it up towards you because I like to work at an angle. And uh, it didn't seem like a lot, but I know it probably was. <laughs> um, I will try to be more organized, but I'm not built that way. I think there's a tag out there that asks how you prepare and generally, I know what I want to talk about. I try to gather everything together, and then I kind of let it fly. <laughs> I don't do this in any professional manner. This is all just for fun. I um, separated the stitching out from my regular craft channel because I also do paper crafting and polymer clay and all kinds of things, altered art. I went from cross stitching way back when into doll making and I've gone from doll making into now more eclectic crafting. I will be stopping everything shortly to work on a doll for the Wiltwick Quilters show that's coming up in October down in downstate New York. Um, so that's going to have to take precedence over all of my other muse leanings. But anyway, so that's where I am. I hope that you enjoyed seeing an update on my pieces. I hope I get them finished shortly because I do want to start that Imagine piece with the unicorn head. And there are a couple of Halloween ones I'm considering for my other piece of fabric that I dyed. And I have some other fabric coming because I placed a larger order with 123 Stitch that isn't here yet and I will show that when it comes. So for now, I hope you have a very colorful and stitchy day, and whatever else happens, I hope you have time to enjoy. So thank you for joining me. 